Hey, Mr. Myas is here. Hey, how's it going? Um, hopefully the sound's going okay and you can see me and I'm talking at the same same time as you're seeing my voice. It's not looking like it on my screen anyway. Hey, anyway, we're here. We're going to look at uh, starting unit two in the essentials of calculus. So we'll start with 2.1. In section 2.1, I'll have three videos for you. So we're going to start with learning some more uh, techniques of limits and we'll also talk more about continuity. So let's go and take a look right up this way whatever which way it is but let me shrink myself down all right so let's take a look at some examples now when we last left off talking about limits we talked about how we can use direct substitution to find the limit now that doesn't work if we end up with an what we call an indeterminate form now an indeterminate form is any form that's either zero over zero or infinity over infinity well there are other in indeterminate forms too but for the most part, those are the only ones you're going to run into when dealing with limits. So whenever we have an indeterminate form, we need to um, we need to do something else. So my suggestion is that we are going. Oh, look at someone just posted in Facebook. Sorry about that. Um, we are going to need to do some algebraic techniques. So let me go through this real quick, quick and run you through these. So let's start with number one. So when we plug in zero, notice when I plug in zero, I'm going to end up with uh, 0 over 0, right? So anytime I end up with 0 over 0, I'm going to need to do some algebra. So in this case, the algebra that I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify, okay? I'm going to drop out the x's, and I'd like to write my limit again, okay? I'm just not, I can't just write 1 over x plus 1. I need to write the limit as 1 over x plus 1, and that is equal to, well, plug in 0 now, that's equal to 1. Okay, now anytime these cancel out we just know from maybe a previous class that when this simplifies out um, we're going to end up with a hole in the graph okay this is a hole at the point zero comma one how do i know it's one i would plug in zero here and i get you know, i get the limit right there's one so that's a hole just kind of a side note there let's take a look at number two all right notice here number two we plug in two in there we get two minus two which is zero four minus two which is zero zero over zero is indeterminate cannot be determined so what am I going to do I'm going to do something of course right I'm just not going to leave it there I'm going to do something so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor yes the big f word of math fact come on man factor everybody knows that so this time we're going to factor and we're going to reduce that down and we're going to have limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x plus 2 and that's going to be 1 fourth all right so this again, since I canceled something out, I'm going to have a hole in the graph. And my x value here is going to be 2 because I just take the bottom here, x minus 2 equals 0. Solve that. And I'm going to plug 2 back in and I'm going to get 1 fourth, right? So I've got a hole there. All right, let's take a look at another one. Number 3. Number 3 again, if I plug in 1, we always try to plug in. That's the first thing we always do with limits. Try to plug it in to see what happens. So it might not be indeterminate. But if it is, we got to do some math right so limit as x approaches 1 I'm going to factor the top using the difference of cubes formula so that's x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1 all right difference of cubes and then I'm going to go ahead and simplify that limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus x plus 1 plug that guy in and I get 3 and what do we know we know there's a hole right there's a hole at 1 comma 3 okay so um, now we're gonna go ahead and move on hold on one second I'm gonna pause this first quick second okay let's take a look at number four here now number four is a funny looking one here if I put one in here I'm gonna get zero one down here I'm gonna get zero how are we going to deal with this guy well you can do one of two things you can either factor the bottom with using a difference of two squares, which is a weird kind of factoring, but I've seen it done before where you're going to take and you're going to say this is square root of x plus 1 times square root of x minus 1. All right, because square root of x times square root of x is just x. And then these two guys are going to cancel out. And then you get 1 over square root of x plus 1. 
all right? So that's one method you can do to simplify it. The other method is using the conjugate. So what I would do is I would multiply the bottom by uh, square root of x plus 1 and the top by square root of x plus 1. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to multiply these two guys out and I'm going to end up with x minus 1, which is going to cancel out. And I'm going to end up with the same thing I had down here. So either method is appropriate. And now once I have this, I can now plug in 1 and I get 1 over root 2. Okay, where's the hole at here? The hole at here is going to be at 1, comma, 1 half. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Limit as x approaches 2 from the right of x over x minus 2. So if I plug this in, um, I'm going to get 2 over uh, 0. Well, 2 over 0, anytime I have a limit that is equal to, that has, oh, i got to fly in front of me, guys. Anytime I have a, a, a limit that has a zero in the denominator, that's I'm going to either write that as does not exist, or I'm going to write it as infinity or negative infinity. Now, I have to decide which one it is. I can't just write infinity because it might go, it might go, it might go down or it might go up. So I have to be correct on whether it's positive or negative infinity. Now, what I could do is a little bit of sign, what I call sign analysis. Basically, I'm going to take a value that's really, 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 really close to 2 from the right. So that's bigger than 2, right? Because I'm coming from the right. It's bigger than 2, like 2.0001, right? 2 point something something. So if I put 2.001, I'm going to end up with a positive on top. And 2.0001 minus 2 is going to give me a positive on the bottom. Those are both going to give me a positive. So that tells me that I'm going to this limit is going to go to positive infinity. All right, anytime a limit as x approaches a number goes to an infinity, positive or negative, then I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 in this case, whatever the denominator was. All right, okay, let's take a look at some continuity questions that kind of fit with this. All right, discuss the continuity of f of x equals a piecewise function here. So notice here that we have to talk about the continuity, meaning we've got this break point. And what we want to know is f of 3 equal to the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. That's our question. Is it continuous there? So we notice here that we have a, a break, right? x cannot be 3. So we know that there is a break, but we want to know what kind of break that's going to be. Let's go ahead and simplify this. We're going to factor this to x minus 3, x plus 1. And then I'm going to simplify that. So now I get the function x plus 1 when x is not 3, and 5 when x is equal to 3. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left is going to be 4 and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is going to be 5. So it looks like I have a line okay, I have a line that once I get to 3 um, oops this is x equals 3 sorry that's not right um, the limit as x approaches 3 is, it, this is not equal to 3, right? So actually, 3 from the left and 3 from the right are still going to use x plus 1. What I do know is f of 3, right? Because this is equal to 3. I, I know that's 5. So I know that the limit's going to approach the same number. And it's going to be a line, and there's going to be another dot here. Okay? So I'm going to say this is a removable discontinuity. at x equals 3. Okay? All right. Let's go to number 7 here. Is this... Okay, so this... We've got a function g of x is continuous function. Find the value of a. So the easiest way, and I, I explained this... Um, actually, I, I think I explained it to some other people. So anyway, anytime we have this type of continuous function question where we're trying to find the value in there, the, the easiest way to do this is to take the cut point 
whatever the cut point is, plug it in to each value of x in the corresponding um, equation there. So I'm going to have 3 times 2 squared plus a, and I'm going to set it equal to um, the other one there, 2 minus 3. Okay, that's this one right here. So then I'm going to have 12 plus a equals negative 1, and a is negative 13. That's all there is to that, guy. So you plug in each of them, set it equal to one another, boom, find your, um, find your variable a. Okay? All right. So um, that's it for this video. On the next video, I so for this video, you should have been able to uh, find limits using when they're in when you find an indeterminate form when you plugged it in for uh, direct substitution. So you were to use algebra techniques, and then we also did some questions about continuity. And in the next video, I will do so how do we use ATI Inspire to find the limit of a function. Catch you later, guys. Bye.